Good morning and welcome to worship this morning with Carmichael Presbyterian Church. It is Pentecost Sunday, the day when we celebrate the birth of the church and the gift of God's Holy Spirit to us. We're glad that you have joined us this morning in worship. I'm Pastor Ivan Herman, along with my colleague here, Pastor Keith DeVries, and we want to know that you are also here. And uh, sign in using the registry form that you can find in the bulletin or the parish notes or on the church website. Uh, register there. Let us know that you joined us in worship. Also, let us know whatever uh, concerns or prayer requests may be on your hearts today. If you take a look in the parish notes this morning, you will see a number of announcements, things that are happening in the life of the church and the congregation. Um, we continue to have Zoom Coffee Fellowship this week and next, but we will be taking a break during the summer months from that coffee fellowship time on Zoom. And uh, we do continue to have worship at 845 in person and 10 o'clock here live stream each Sunday. Following this worship service, you will see an art show. It's a second part of an art show by Sue Ann Foster called Free Range Art. So stick around for a few moments and enjoy that art today. And then know that also today we receive the Pentecost offering that goes to support children at risk, youth, and young adult ministry, both in our congregation and across the denomination and the globe. So give generously to that this morning or this week. Today is also Heritage Sunday, and so I'd like to call on Pastor Keith to recognize uh, how we mark our heritage this day. Thank you. So in addition to Pentecost Sunday, this is also Heritage Sunday, and it is that day when we recognize and celebrate uh, the members of this church who have contributed so much to our life and ministry for many, many years. So I'd invite you to turn to page two in your parish notes, and you will see a long list of names of folks that have served uh, anywhere from 40 to 60 years. And I'm going to just call out the different groups and read those names uh, and just kind of ask you to think about uh, those folks and their faithfulness over the years. Uh, those who have been serving this church uh, for over 60 years, William Baker, George and Carolyn Burbank, who, by the way, are celebrating on June 9 their 65th wedding anniversary as well. Trudy Carney, who's 101, Helene Crowley, Carol Honnold, Gordon and Carolyn McGregor, Phil and Jimmy Mishler, Hazel Smith. The over 50-year crowd, Bob and Doris Beckert, Sue Carey, Carla Curran, Linda Gracie, Don Drudick, Ruth Duncan, Betty Exted, Patty Grimm, and Kelly, Barbara Crefting, Joanne Lindsay, Barbara Moore, Jan Olson, Janet Olson, Jerry Peffley, Joyce Purvis, Wayne and Barbara Reimers, Ed and Jan Saunders, Dave and Marie Seeger, Kathy Shea, Lynn Schultz, Jeanette Stoker, Bob Taylor, Mary Torgerson, Lori White, Linda Williams, Doreen Wilson, and Matthew Willey. Our 60-year members joined in 1961, Noni French Parker, Margaret Herman, and Ramel King. Our 50-year members joined in 1971, Bob Brum, Lois Griffin, Marsha Law. Our 45-year members, Karen Banker, Sue Boynton, Harvey and Jane Swenson, Keith and Betty Tronson. And in our 40-year members, Lisa Benedom, Jeannie Graham, Sally Hitchcock, David McMay, Polly Murphy-Jones, Lee and Bonnie Paxton, Carolee Roach. And then we had a new member join in uh, this last year during the pandemic, uh, and that's Marsha Cook. And we celebrate Marsha Cook becoming a part of the life of this church, and we challenge her to get on this list in the next 40 to 45 to 50 or 60 years. And we thank all of our members and all of you for your faithfulness and commitment and dedication to the ministry of Jesus Christ here at Carmichael Presbyterian. And God bless you. I would now like to invite the Stokes family to call us to worship. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May God rejoice in all God has made, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. 
May my meditation be pleasing, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you to Clark Stokes and his mom, Ray Nani, as we uh, are called to worship together. We also now sing together our opening hymn, Let Every Christian Pray. Welcome now to lead us in this time of confession, the Kamalu and Ebere family. All to confession. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. It is new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness, knowing that we will find mercy in the presence of our God. We have courage to confess our sins before God and each other. Let us pray together. Unison, prayer of confession. Merciful God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues and ready ears. We confess that we ignore your spirit among us. We are silent about you when we should speak and listen to almost any voice but your own. We do not listen for your word of grace, which invites us. We do not speak the good news of your love, which invites others. Have mercy on us, O God. Gracious God, transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit. Fill us with a flaming desire to be a believing and witnessing people doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Five prayers of confession. Assurance of pardon. Scripture announces that this is a true saying. 
and is to be universally accepted. Christ Christ came came into into the world world to save sinners. sinners. While While we were were yet sinners, sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, in Christ Christ you are forgiven. forgiven. Know this and and be at peace. Amen. 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 And thank you to Osita and Christiana and their sons, Tyron and Ethan, for leading us in that time of confession. And having heard the good news of God's love and grace, God's forgiveness for us, we respond by giving thanks and praising God with the Gloria Patri. on this Pentecost. I'd like to invite my young friends to join me here on these steps. Uh, Join me with your your family, your friends, and wherever you are sitting right now or laying down on on a couch, uh, at your kitchen table, dining room table, welcome. It's really glad, it's really good, and I'm glad to have you here with us today. So this is Pentecost, and uh, usually in Pentecost we wear red, right? Here's my red tie. Pastor Ivan has red shirt. Jenny has a sort of red shirt on. Um, and we, oh no, <laughs> my props falling apart. And, um, and so we celebrate uh, the gift of God's Holy Spirit and we talk about the wind that blows. And my little pinwheel windmill stick. Yeah, and those are always fun, right? And we've shared those with you before and, and we talk about the God's breath uh, that blows mightily. And we talk about speaking in tongues and uh, tongues of, of fire. And we talk about the word of God coming to the whole world in every language. And it's just a grand celebration of the gift of God's spirit and the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit um, differently about Pentecost. Because in John's gospel, we actually hear about the Holy Spirit just before Easter. And that's kind of new and different for most of us. Um, And uh, Jesus is preparing his disciples for that time when he will no longer be with them, and they were kind of scared and confused and didn't really know what that meant. Uh, but Jesus assured them that someone was coming, that God would be sending God's Holy Spirit to be with them. And that person is called the Advocate. The Advocate. The Advocate is uh, another name for someone who walks alongside of you, a comforter, a counselor, maybe even a friend. And Jesus was telling his disciples that they would have this very intimate and close relationship with God's Holy Spirit and advocate. Now, in some of the materials that you got from Lisa this week, there's a little worksheet on follow, called Following the Path. And if you have that with me, we'll kind of walk through it because that talks about what I just said. I'll say it again until we get there. So we look at this and just kind of circle all the capital letters along the path and we'll see what we come up with. First capital letter on follow the path is A. And then D is the next one. V after that. Then O. And then C. And then, oh, there's A again, capital A. Capital T. And at the very end, capital E. Let's put those together. A, D, B-O-C-A-T-E. Oh, advocate. There you go. You follow God's path and you get to advocate. And that's what we celebrate today is that that gift from God um, because God loves us so much that God didn't want us to ever be without God's presence. And even though Jesus is no longer present with us on this earth, we have God's advocate to be with us, God's friend, counselor, comforter, that we'll have this unique and wonderful ongoing relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the gift of God's Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday. 
So God bless all of you on this Sunday, and uh, may God bless you throughout the week as we join together again on these front steps next Sunday. Have a good week. Please sing with us. Our scripture reading on this Pentecost Sunday comes to us from John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, and then continuing on in chapter 16, verse 4a through 15. Hear now God's word to us on Pentecost Sunday. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. 
And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. May God bless to Bless to us the reading of God's holy word. Amen. This past Friday, I had the joyful opportunity to visit uh, one of our faithful members, Dick Piper, in the Carlton Senior Living Center in Orangevale. Dick has been in and out of hospitals and care facilities like the Carlton, for many weeks now, and finally has entered into hospice care. When I arrived, Dick was surrounded by his three daughters, Linda, Gail, and Bree, and he was in his bed, which was next to the window, and right outside the window was this fun bird feeder hanging there with several little finches gathered around and, and eating birds and kind of chirping at us inside the, play, inside the room. Dick and I quickly uh, engaged in conversation, talking about his medical ordeals and various facilities that he has been in and out of over the past couple of months. Dick admitted to me that he was ready to be done with all of this, to be done with this life, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Though his body and strength of voice didn't seem quite as ready as he wanted them to be. One of the things that we talked about was how many times Dick has retired and unretired from greeting people outside the front doors of the sanctuary on Sunday mornings and also from teaching countless adult education classes. Dick is truly an institution here at CPC and he will leave a lasting impact on all of us. Two things of note took place during our time together on Friday. The first was that out of nowhere, Dick asked me what my theology of grace was. Suddenly, I felt like I was a seminary student being asked a question by my professor as I stumbled to say something like, well, my theology of grace is defined by unsolicited acts of love. To which Dick quickly added, you mean unsolicited and undeserved acts of love, don't you? To which I quickly agreed. A few moments later, trying to move away from that topic, uh, I told Dick that I brought my Bible with me and would be happy to read a passage of his choosing if he wanted me to. Without hesitation, Dick blurted out 1 Corinthians 13. I opened my Bible, New Revised Standard Version, and read to him chapter 13. But I would have preferred to have read Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, which reads as follows, and I want to share this with you now. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, 
doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering it through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly. And the best of these three is love. I think it's fair to say that Dick Piper truly embodies 1 Corinthians 13. And I also think it's fair to say that Dick Piper embodies the meaning of my sermon today, talk, walk, and listen like Christians. As our text on this Pentecost Sunday reminds us that God's love abides in Dick and in us through the promised gift of God's Holy Spirit, a gift that comes alongside of us and penetrates our very being. In the reading from John's Gospel, we find Jesus preparing his disciples for what's coming next. Among the Gospel writers, it is the author of John who places this conversation around the giving of God's Holy Spirit to the disciples within the setting of what is known as the Farewell Discourse, or as Claudio Carvalho states it, the So Long Talk, as Jesus prepares his disciples for his impending departure following his betrayal, crucifixion, and resurrection. In John, Jesus recognizes that his disciples are confused and anxious. So he explains the purpose of God's soon-to-arrive Holy Spirit, described as the Advocate, assuring them that they will not be abandoned or left alone before he breathes upon them the gift of the Holy Spirit on Easter Day. The name John used to describe God's promised presence is the Advocate, in the Greek, paraclete, the one who will be the presence of Jesus in his absence. The language used to describe paraclete or advocate includes helper, comforter, counselor, with the literal translation being one called alongside of. Francis Taylor Gench wants to remind all Christians that this is a community gift, commenting that since, quote, believers are not always in agreement on the direction in which the Spirit is leading. It is important to note that the gift of the paraclete, the Spirit, is a gift to the whole community and is not a private possession. The paraclete dwells within the believer, giving voice to truth and empowering unwavering witness. Another name used here in John's Gospel for advocate is Spirit of Truth. John's Gospel uses the word truth at least 25 times and defines Jesus himself as truth in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This truth is not simply verbal proclamation, but it is God's loving actions unfolded through Jesus Christ on the cross. Will Willimon shares some of his reflections on this text by saying that he finds it interesting that Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. Truth, 
after all, is something we like to avoid. It's hard to hear. It can be painful, or it might even require us to live our lives in a different way. So maybe Jesus is trying to tell us that even if we find the truth challenging or unpleasant, through the gift of the Spirit of truth, he will help to guide us as one who comes alongside of us. Willem then continues by saying that the challenge before all of us is to take time to learn from the Spirit of truth, to take time to learn how to listen, to take time to learn how to talk like Christians. We are to take the time to attempt to bend our lives toward the living God, God breathed, God all consuming word of God that demands to have authority on all of our life. The spirit of truth also calls us to account and it's not just about the sin of unbelief or lack of faith but rather how we notoriously split belief from practice word from action, and walk from talk. Carvalho says, quote, It is then that our sin continues clamorously alive behind our comfortable beliefs. The spirit of truth challenges our attitudes and our actions, and whether or not our lives will show it if we live a life of righteousness. Does our life bear fruit in our relationships with each other and with God? And finally, the spirit of truth is about judgment. No, not about judging one another, but about judgment as in crisis of decision, about decisions that we make, calling upon us to condemn the world's decisions to choose evil over good. Because when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide us into all truth. The gift of God's Holy Spirit the advocate, the one who comes alongside us, wants to make a home within us where we can find God in the midst of life and where we will make every attempt to talk and to walk and to listen to one another, you know, like Christians. On this Pentecost Sunday, as we receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit, the advocate, the spirit of truth, I share with you Walter Brueggemann's prayerful blessing called blown by God toward newness. The news is that God's wind is blowing. It may be a breeze that cools and comforts. It may be a gust that summons you to notice. It may be a storm that blows you where you have never been before. Whatever the wind is in your life, pay attention to it. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will abide with you always. Amen and amen. Let us pray together. Almighty and wondrous God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit, not just in the past, but now in our lives today. Thank you for the gift of the advocate, the one who comes alongside of us and dwells and abides within us. Bless us, O Lord, on our continuing journey with the spirit of truth as we seek to be faithful in our walk with you. And we pray and ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Take me where you 
We are blessed. We are blessed to be a blessing. And with the gifts that we have received, we give back to God so that God's mission in the world may be advanced and God's glory abound. We receive today not only our gifts and offerings, but we also receive the Pentecost offering as it is committed to supporting uh, missions and ministries with youth at risk, children, and young adults. So I invite you to pray together with me now our prayer of dedication. Generous God, from your abundance, we have, you have freely given. And now from our abundance, we give you what is yours. Receive what we offer so that your world will not grow weary and that your glory may be known in abundance. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. We come now to a time of lifting our joys and concerns, our prayers together as a community of faith, and I invite you to turn to page two of your parish notes, and you will see there the names of folks we pray for this week. I invite you to, to hold on to these and, and pray for these folks during the week here and uh, revisit this list daily. We uh, do lift up prayers for Dick Piper, as, he, uh, as you heard Keith's story of uh, he has entered into hospice care and is being loved and cared for in these final days or weeks, or however long he continues to be with us. And we give thanks um, for that good care. And we pray for Dick, we pray for his daughters, uh, his family, as they surround and support him at this time. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Lois Griffin, who was briefly in the hospital and is now home. Family is making decisions about how best to care for her in the long term. And so we lift up our prayers for peace for Lois and for her family. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers for Lisa Benedom. She also was hospitalized briefly earlier this past weekend uh, with a, a seizure, uh, is now home, continuing to recover, and it continues to be engaged in the life of the church. Uh, and so we pray for healing and for patience for Lisa as well. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers for Wade Chandler, uh, who continues to battle brain cancer, um, and uh, the changes continue to happen in his journey. And we pray for him, for his family, we pray for his mother-in-law, Terry Bartow, uh, and for the community and family that surrounds and support, supports him on this journey. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our world, a world of nations. We pray for peace in Israel and Palestine. We pray for not just uh, this current ceasefire that stops the violence, but we pray for peace that comes with justice in a land that is filled with oppression, a land that is filled with discrimination and injustice. We pray for hope. For we follow a man who was both Palestinian and Jew. And we pray for these communities and these people who suffer under oppression and who suffer with violence. And we pray for peace in Christ's name. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We join now together in this time of prayer and I'll be praying in, as it's Pentecost, a day of languages and recognition of God's spirit among us in the whole world. I'll be praying in both Spanish and in English, and we'll translate uh, in, in both directions. So let us pray together. Come, O Holy Spirit, ben Espiritu Santo. Wash over us with a peace that passes all understanding. Cúbranos con una paz que sobrepasa todo entendimiento with gratitude for our daily bread, with love for our neighbors and for ourselves, 
and with courage for the journey. Con una paz, te damos gracias por nuestro pan de cada día. Con amor por nuestro prójimo y por nosotros mismos. Y, con, y por coraje para este viaje. Come, Holy Spirit, we await your transformation. Ven, Espíritu Santo, esperamos tu transformación. Envíanos con, con poder para amar a los que el mundo llama desagradable. Para fortalecer a los que han vacilado en el camino. Para curar a los de corazón quebrado. Para emplear tu gracia en la lucha por la justicia. Send us out, O oh God, with your power to love those whom the world calls unloved and unlovely. Strengthen those who have faltered along the way. Bind up the brokenhearted and employ your gifts in the struggle for justice. Come, paraclete, be our helper as we help the neediest among us. Ben paraclito, sé nuestro ayudor mientras ayudamos a los que más necesitan nuestra ayuda. Change us, we pray. Move us and send us into the world with your power for your glory. Cámbianos, te lo pedimos. Muévenos y envíanos al mundo con tu poder y para tu gloria. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us go forth out in the world this week as God's Pentecost people, knowing that the Spirit of Truth, the Advocate, dwells within us. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the holy breath of God's Holy Spirit blow mightily upon all of you this day and evermore. Amen. Amen.